In this video, we're going to apply a background video to the page, much like you can see just now. Um, you can see I've got the video basically on loop in the background, and the page itself is just normal. Uh, this will allow me to add additional elements to the page, so I could add maybe a logo up here. I could add some text in the middle of the page. This is essentially a background video. So this is what we're going to be building. We're going to be using an HTML5 player for this, and we're going to just be applying a few styles so we can get the effect uh, that we can see here. What we're also going to be looking at is how we can speed up or slow down the playback rate uh, so this is a little bit slower. And obviously we'll be taking a look at some best practices as well, uh, including muting the video by default so it doesn't annoy users. So let's go ahead and build this. So to save a little bit of time, I've already marked out most of my page. We're just going to be adding the video element and some script tags. And obviously over in our style sheet that we have linked in, we're going to be adding the styles. So just to explain a little bit about this, if, uh, if you're not familiar with it, we've obviously just got a HTML5 doc type with a head. We've got uh, just the usual title. We've got this linked in style sheet here, which is really important because we're going to be adding our styles here to select that video. And we also have inside of a video folder here, uh, just a video video of um, someone typing at a laptop. So it basically looks like that if I just open it up in my browser. Um, this is obviously just playing um, with uh, a control bar down here, but we're going to be removing this. So this is what the video looks like. It's going to look a little bit different to this when we actually apply it to the page. So this is the video. Um, make sure you have a video prepared. Um, I'm obviously using an MP4 video here. Um, and I'm only going to be using an MP4 video for the purposes of this tutorial. But there are obviously other media formats that you need to include in an HTML5 tag or element to be able to support multiple browsers. So I'd highly recommend just heading over to uh, developer.mozilla.org, uh, basically uh, MDN, and have a look at this article that just gives you a, a good idea of the different supported types and this will uh, probably be constantly updated um, it's a really good resource this so uh, have a look at this and um, decide how you're going, going to include different types to support different browsers um, other than that we're going to just use an mp4 and get on with it so at the moment my page is obviously blank um, inside of my body i'm going to create a video element so the video element here uh, we can get rid of this source here um, we're going to include the um, sources within this, but there's a couple of attributes that we need to add in order to make this a little bit nicer. So the first thing is we want it to autoplay, and we will have a problem here on devices like, um, I think probably iOS devices with um, browsers on iOS because they won't allow autoplay. But if you have an iPad or, or, or some kind of iOS de device like an iPhone, Try it out and see what see what kind of uh, result that you get with that. But other than that, we want to take into account the fact that we want this to loop. Because obviously, when the video finishes, we don't just want it to stop. You might do, but you can remove that loop prop, uh, attribute if you want to. Otherwise, you can just leave it in for the video to loop. Now, again, really importantly, we want this to be muted. It's probably a good idea to use a video that doesn't have audio, or if a video that you want to use does have audio, go ahead and strip that out because it would just really be unnecessary. Um, you don't want the audio to play for the sheer reason that if your users want to mute it, they're gonna to have to turn down their speakers. They don't have, they're not gonna have any controls here. We're not including the controls attribute, so you know the user's not gonna be able to, uh, to, pause, uh, to mute the video or even pause it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is add a class and an ID as you'd expect. The ID we're gonna use just to control with JavaScript down here. If you're using a library like jQuery or something, you can just use the class to do this, but I'm not gonna pull in jQuery just to access this element. So the class here is just gonna be BG video and the ID is BG video. So for the sources then, um, let's just add these in. So the source is in video and this is laptop underscore girl dot mp4 and the type here is obviously video slash mp4 so now we should have on our page that video cool so it looks good it's going to loop you'll see the point where it does loop because it's quite a short video in just a moment 
there we go just loop that so we've got our video in here this is the actual size of the video so obviously at the moment it's not our background image uh, or background video rather obviously we're not going to be changing something like the body background property because that would be silly we can't do that with the video at least not yet so we need to be not hacky but a little bit uh, resourceful in order to do this so under main.css let's target uh, bg video remember we have this style sheet linked in and the first thing we want to do is add the uh, change the positioning of this so we can fix it to the page and that means that the other content on your page will scroll fine but this element will remain fixed and that's exactly what we want because essentially what we can then do is mock a background video so we're going to say position fixed and we need to set the um, basically the top left bottom or right properties so I'm just going to say right zero and bottom zero and then we're going to say we want a minimum width and you probably guess what this value is going to be of 100% and we also want a minimum height of 100% so um, the width and the height are going to be auto so let's take a look now uh, at what we have here um, let's just do a refresh there we go so we've now basically got this sort of fixed to the uh, where it looks like it's fixed to the background of the page if for example on this page now we were to add some um, paragraph elements down the page and let's just do that a few times let's just grab these and paste these down here we should have enough room to scroll now Ah, okay so this brings me on to the next property that we need to add and that's changing the Z index that's just where this is placed uh, in layers if you like so we change the Z index um, if we want an element really far forward we would add the, a number higher otherwise we would add a lower number in this case I'm just going to do minus 9999 and that means that any elements added will automatically be placed um, on the on the front here um, so let me just add a few more paragraphs because it looks like that wasn't enough just add a couple down here and then when we refresh we can now scroll down the page so you can see now that we've got a background image stuck on the back now so now that we've got our background video sorted this is looking really good but what happens if your browser doesn't support background video or one of your users browsers more correctly doesn't support background video and that's going to be a problem particularly if you've got say light text on a on a dark video uh, you're then going to basically show your users this because the video element just won't work uh, the video won't be shown so to combat this what we need to do is put some kind of placeholder in effect so what I actually have here is um, I have a still of the of this girl typing on this laptop so I'm going to hit um, or create a new folder call it image and I'm going to drag over this still we'll have a look at this in just a moment um, so inside of my text editor then let's just open that, that I've dragged across it's basically just a still of the girl typing and I lazily just screenshotted this from QuickTime so you can see that I've got my little uh, controls thing open here uh, but you go ahead and do a better job of that and then just follow along the rest of the steps to get this sorted so like I said if the video is not available we're just rendered with a white screen so what we can do is on the background of this page and obviously you wouldn't want to apply this to all of your pages because then you would have a background of some hands typing on a keyboard you would say background image and then you choose the URL in this case it's image slash typing dot PNG and obviously make sure this image is you know highly optimized for the web and it's as small as possible uh, just so you don't uh, spend any or your users don't spend any additional time loading images that are too large so let's get rid of this video element now then and let's refresh and oops let's just change this to background rather than background oh okay obviously we're in the CSS directory so we want to go back one and we should then see the following cool so this is obviously looking a bit odd at the moment because essentially what's happening is it is uh, chopping off the image where the viewport is too small that's fine what we can do is we can use the um, background size property and you can go ahead and look this up on uh, MDN if you want but basically the one that we're going to be using is cover and this says this keyword specifies that the background image should be scaled as small as possible which is what we want we don't want it to chop off 
but while ensuring both its dimensions are greater than or equal to the corresponding dimensions of the background positioning area. That basically means that whatever the uh, ratio to the image, we want this to basically try and fill the whole of the background, but we don't want any white space to be left. So what actually happens is when we say background size contain, uh, did I say contain or cover? Yeah, sorry, we want cover. Then we're going to see the following. So it contains it within it, um, but you can see that it has been chopped off a little bit at the bottom because it's a wide, a wide image. But that's not a problem. You won't have this horrible bar down here either. It does look a bit dodgy at the moment. But either way, regardless of whether the video element is supported, this will produce a similar effect. And the reason as well that this image is a little bit zoomed in, if you like, is purely because the, the video I'm using is really large. You may want to kind of scale that down, particularly if the video is a, a high file size as well. At the moment, this is loading really, really quickly for me because I'm just working locally. But obviously, you can imagine a, a three or four megabyte um, video is going to take quite a while to download over the over the web particularly on um, devices that have lower bandwidth, like uh, mobile phones, particularly if you're out and about and on something like 3G. So just bear this in mind. It's really important to bear. Do you need a video image um, on your website? Because obviously users, like I said, with lower bandwidth will suffer with that. So that's how we do a background video. Checking out on other devices and sort of learn how to support this between devices and you'll probably struggle on devices like iPads where this won't autoplay. Uh, but again, you'll just get a still image here. Um, there are probably JavaScript libraries to uh, detect and choose the most appropriate uh, course of action here. Have a play around anyway, uh, even if you don't end up using this, it's quite a fun thing to do and know how to do.